Well, some dogs like to stick their heads out of car windows at 80 miles an hour. Some people like to skinny dip in thunderstorms. And some meteorologists like to get as close as they can to monster tornadoes. But after the tragic loss of three storm chasers in this weekend's spate of Oklahoma twisters, chalking their exploits up to adrenaline addiction seems really unfair. As ABC's own storm chaser, Ginger Z, tells us, the men who lost their lives were driven by the pursuit of life-saving science. And sometimes even the most cautious professional is no match for Mother Nature. Oh, God. Sit down! Duck down! Clap! Go! Why is this guy stopping? Watch it! It was a cruel twist. The second deadly storm to tear through Oklahoma in just 11 days. In its wake, 18 dead, among them six children and three respected scientists. Veteran storm chaser Tim Samaras, his son Paul, and their colleague Carl Young. It's a loss that has shocked the meteorological community. Before Team Twistex set out to track the powerful EF3 tornado in El Reno Friday night, Tim spoke with MSNBC and gave this eerie premonition. Uh, boy, the ingredients are coming together for a pretty volatile day. In the aftermath of the storms, Samaras was found dead, still strapped in his car. The rest of his team sucked into the Twister's 165 mile per hour winds. Storm chasers are a special breed of scientists. When everyone else is driving in the other direction, they hurl themselves directly into the heart of the storm. Come here, where are you, where are you? There's lots, still lots, lots of wind here, buddy. They say their mission is to better understand nature's destructive and deadly force. But this tragedy has shaken the storm chasing community to its core and left many wondering how it could have happened to this meteorological hero. Wake up this morning, that news is is horrifying. You know, it's a, like a nightmare. Reed Timmer was also in El Reno and knew Tim and Carl well. All four of us worked together on the Discovery Channel show Storm Chasers. We knew Tim as one of the most cautious chasers in the business. There's something that doesn't make sense because he knew exactly what he was doing and he's always been controlled and safe and it just doesn't make sense. Something is not right. Tim was a true pioneer in the field who devised technology that continues to help us measure and predict tornadoes. His quest to learn and inform always inspired him to give chase. Oh my God, that was huge! I had the honor of joining Tim on a recent expedition to study his other love. Lightning. So, oh, look at that. That was beautiful. But the problem is, everybody's, oh, geez, Tim, it's really easy. Just get in your car, go find a, go hear a rumble of thunder, go park up next to it, you're in. Well, it's not that easy. Sometimes it's almost as difficult chasing a tornado as it is a good lightning storm. So, we're going to go see the kahuna. Yep. Always on the cutting edge, Tim built this ultra high speed camera in the hopes that he could capture the birth of a lightning strike. There's actually 82 cameras on this wow. instrument here, taking one picture of the lightning and one microsecond steps of time at a million frames per second. Critics said it was impossible, but Tim has never been one to shy away from a challenge. I'm not gonna give up until this is done, especially with the naysayers telling me this can't be done. Mm -hmm. That just drives me harder. Before we left that day, he kissed his wife goodbye. His son Paul joined his dad on the chase. Back then, he was a new addition to Team Twistex, who was eager to learn the family business. In all, we covered four states on our journey, more than 800 miles with plenty of pop and drop disappointing storms. Yeah, this storm, this storm kicked out several lightning strikes. They were probably about five minutes apart, hardly worth firing the equipment over, but it's pretty. But yeah, if rainbow pretty. chasing were the goal, we did it. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah, we scored the F5 in rainbows. Yeah, we did. But then, just as dark settled in, we got lucky. Oh my God, oh my God. Due north, a classic thunderstorm, bursting with lightning. Oh, oh man. All right, it is happening. It's gonna come right now. CG. CG. Yeah, it was like 12 o'clock. Yeah. And with Paul on watch and Tim manning the camera, they managed to snag a beautiful image. Numerous branches, then the first one hits the ground, then the return stroke. Oh my God. Studying lightning, studying tornadoes are one of the final frontiers of meteorology. You know, those are the things that are, because they're so fleeting, they're so very difficult to study. You have to get up close 
and you have to collect imagery, you have to collect data to feed these models. And maybe a computer prediction model can actually tell you down the road how much lightning in particular thunderstorms can generate. It's that philosophy to get close to storms that drives meteorologists like us to keep chasing despite the obvious risk. But now, some say Tornado Alley is saturated with an increasing number of untrained, uneducated storm chasers. They've been blamed for storm chasing traffic jams and unsafe conditions in the past. Officials say that might have been the case Friday night. I think it's probably really the amateur storm chasers that cause more of an issue because we've got a lot of people that need to be out there, the first responders, uh, news organizations, and legitimate storm chasers that are trying to get information out. But legitimate storm chasing scientists like Tim and Reed Timmer aren't just after the thrills. In 2007, Timmer captured this breakthrough video in Ellis County, Oklahoma, and freeze it right there. Those are essentially smaller tornadoes inside the bigger tornado called suction vortices. Before this video, scientists had suspected they exist, but had no exact proof. And then there's Tim's turtle probe that he would bravely put in the path of storms. In 2003, it measured the biggest pressure drop ever recorded in the heart of a tornado. Incredibly valuable data for a generation of engineers. Ultimately, his goal was actually saving lives through the technology that he's been able to develop. Jim Samaras takes solace in the fact that his brother, his nephew and their colleague Carl all died doing what they love. The biggest thing that he could have done was he gave his life for others. So, oh, look at that. That was beautiful. There's for Tim, was it was a wide-eyed, enthusiastic kind of passion that fueled his every chase. I don't know how many storms I've seen in my lifetime, but every single one of them, I still get pretty excited. The little boy in me just wants to come out here and just watch and stare. For Nightline, I'm Ginger Z in El Reno, Oklahoma.